Hi, I'm here with Andy Green from Bloodhound Supersonic uh, SSC uh, and Engineering Adventure. And Andy Green is the current land speed record holder. Um, Andy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, my day job, I'm lucky enough to be a fighter pilot in the Royal Air Force, which I get a lot of satisfaction from. But I've also got the world's best weekend job, which is working with Richard Noble and his team, building the world's first 1,000 mile an hour car. That's fantastic. Um, I understand that right now we have a, uh, there's an issue with the lack of engineers and people that are interested in science. Can you elaborate a little bit on that in this, in this, in this country? Yeah, if you look at how dependent we are on technology nowadays, uh, the, the, the technological revolution, the challenges of, uh, of the technology over the next 10 or 15 years, the move into a high-tech, low-carbon future, we need a huge number. In the UK alone, we need about half a million engineers, and we are struggling to get those. 60% of our highly skilled engineers are going to retire from the profession in the next 20 years. So we've got a huge problem. It's not just the UK, it's the same in the US, it's the same across Europe. So we've started this project to try and inspire kids into a, an interest in science and engineering. Now, if a thousand miles an hour and all the challenges of getting there doesn't excite them, they've got to be dead. That's right. Let's talk a little bit about that thousand mile an hour barrier that you're talking about. That sounds like a very ambitious goal. What makes you think that you can get there? We've spent three and a half years researching this project. Uh, we looked initially at the possibility of doing a thousand miles an hour. We spent 18 months researching it. We announced it in public. We spent another two years doing the research. We have the power plants. We have an EJ200 uh, Eurojet engine, nine tons of thrust uh, from the, uh, the Eurofighter Typhoon. We have our own Falcon rocket, 12 tons of thrust. So a total of 135,000 horsepower uh, to drive the car. That will get us to 1,000 miles an hour if we can keep the car on the ground. We've had Swansea University, the world's leaders in supersonic ground effect computer modeling. Um, Intel as our IT partner have supplied us with some of the biggest computers in the country to do that modeling over the last year or so. And we now have that aerodynamic solution. Um, the other big problem we've got is the wheels. Wheels are about three feet, about 90 centimeters across. Um, they need to rotate at 10,000 revolutions a minute, pulling 50,000 times the force of gravity at the wheel rim. To actually get the right shape and the right modeling to make them stay uh, in one piece takes a lot of expertise. Lockheed Martin have given us that expertise to design those wheels. We now have a wheel solution. So we've got wheels, we've got a shape, we've got the power plant. We now know we can get to 1,000 miles an hour. What sort of challenges do you see as far as um, getting to that, to that point? I mean, when you actually are making that run, what sort of challenges do you see that would imp impede on that actually occurring? Well, I'll give you the big obvious challenge. It's getting the funding together. It, financially, it's a really challenging environment. Um, we need about three, three and a half million pounds sterling to build this car. We're probably about a third of the way there right now in the fundraising. But here at Farnborough, we've, we've and again, with this car and with this message of getting the education, it's inspiring a lot of companies. We've had a couple of companies come along this week and actually say, we want to get involved in this. We've announced two new sponsors. Hampson Aerospace is building the whole back half of the car for us, which is great. We've now got a timeline. We know we'll get that chassis early next year. Um, the Institute of Mechanical Engineers in the UK, fantastic education network, which is going to be invaluable for getting that message out there, have also put some money into the project, put their name on the side of the car. So that process is happening now all the time. I'm very, very excited now about the momentum of the project. There's a real buzz in the engineering team. These guys are going to build a thousand miles an hour car. They know they're going to deliver it. End of next year, we'll have a car to run. Why don't you tell us a little bit about when and where you're planning on running the car? Yeah, good question. End of next year, we'll, be, we'll have a car ready to test. We'll do some testing in the UK. Once that shakedown testing is finished, we're going to ship it out to South Africa. Northern Cape Province, right in the northwest corner of South Africa. It's what's called an alkali plier we're running on. It's a 12 mile, 20 kilometer dried lake bed. Very, very fine, very dense clay surface that, uh, that we'll run on. Um, South African government are giving us a huge amount of support to do that. And we'll be there two years from now, middle of 2012. We'll be working up through seven, eight, 900 miles an hour, pushing all the way up to ultimately 1,000 miles an hour. That's great. Obviously, one of your biggest messages is to get out to the kids, as you said. What are the things would you like to, for kids to know about this project to get them excited? Well, in terms of envisaging a car that will do 1,000 miles an hour, what does that mean to a kid? Well, it's one and a half football pitches in the time it takes to blink your eyes. 
It is four and a half football pitches length in one second. It's from a car stationary to being 10 miles away in 100 seconds. Those are the sort of numbers you go, wow. Then you look at the power, 180 Formula One cars. Same power as this has got. Now, why are we getting them excited? We want to get them involved in this car. Yesterday, we released the what's called the vehicle technical spec. 30 pages of detail. That would allow you to build one of these yourself if you want. It's got every single detail of the car. That is, if you take the, you know, if you look at the uh, the modern DNA technology, that's the genome of the car. We're the first team in history to release that level of detail about an ongoing project. Why? We have no commercial or military uh, reason for hiding any of these secrets. We can actually put that out because this is the one and only car. Now, showing the kids how a vehicle technical spec allows us to build this, showing them the detail we're working on, getting them excited. Ultimately, two years from now, we'll be out, out in the desert. Modern technology now will allow us, I'll have a webcam in the cockpit over my shoulder, looking at the instruments, looking out on the desert. You can watch the runs live on the internet while we're doing this. With that level of technology, we're hoping to get the biggest following in history for a single race event to get interest in the science and technology, to be able to download live data from the car while we run it, and actually do the data analysis on the turnaround in the classroom while we're doing it out in the desert. That's the aim of the education program. We've got something like 4,000 schools in the UK signed up. Later on this year, Intel are actually using their global education network to put this whole thing out globally to potentially six million teachers on their, their global education program. South Africa, where we're running the car, a lot of schools are signing up already. So we're very, very excited about the school's audience. So it sounds like the technology can really bring it right into the classroom for these kids. Absolutely. And of course, uh, Farnborough Futures Day, the school's day on the Friday here, um, the first two lectures to be fully signed up were the two Bloodhound lectures, uh, which, which is a real thrill. We're very, very delighted we've got that kind of response. And of course, the kids are just going to be all over this car on Futures Day. So we're very excited about that. Sounds really exciting. Well, I wanted to thank you very much, Andy, and I wish you and Bloodhound and Engineering Adventures all the success in the world. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.